Assalamu alaikum. When English is not your first language, then your native tongue will affect the way you speak and write in English. Linguists call this phenomenon first language interference. I am a native speaker of Arabic, so in the first part of this video, I will discuss first language interference when it comes to native speakers of Arabic. However, even if Arabic is not your first language, you should also watch this part because you might be making some of these mistakes yourself. Speaking mistakes are well known for us, particularly when it comes to pronunciation. We as Arabs find it hard to differentiate between the pa and ba sounds. Think about the two words, pet and bet. We also find it hard to differentiate between the e sound and the e sound as in the letters i and e when they come in the middle of the word. Think of the word pet, which means domestic animal, and pit, which means a hole in the ground. Anyway, speaking is not really our main topic here because this is a writing course. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on the writing mistakes usually made by native speakers of Arabic. In the next part, we're gonna read one paragraph that has a lot of these mistakes. I want you to take some time to try to identify them and correct them if you can. We can take some time to read this paragraph in order to try to identify the mistakes in it. You can pause if you need time to read. Okay, uh, you might have been able to identify some of the mistakes written here, but if you haven't, I'm going to help you with them. Okay, let's read part by part. A number of measures should be taken by the government to make our city a better place. Using the comma here is actually a mistake. You might ask me why, why is it a mistake? It's a mistake because uh, these two sentences, this one and the next one are not connected grammatically. Uh, in Arabic, we use commas if the two sentences are related in meaning. If you're a native speaker of Arabic, the chances are you use the comma here because of this purpose. But in English, you can't use a comma just because two sentences are related in meaning. You have to have a reason for that. And in the next part, I'm going to give you some rules that explain to you how to use commas correctly. Let's continue reading anyway. It should improve the condition of the streets, which are filled with potholes and broken ports. Now, this comma is correct. It doesn't have a mistake, but this one is wrong. In addition, our schools are in a dismal situation. Not enough teachers available in them. Is there anything wrong here? Okay. If you can identify the mistake, great. If you can't, I'll tell you. The mistake in this part is that there is no verb not enough teachers available in them. There are no verbs here. Available is not a verb, it's an adjective, and we don't have any verbs. And you can't have a sentence in English that doesn't have a verb in it. The reason why native speakers of Arabic make this mistake is that we do have sentences in Arabic which don't have verbs in them. We call them nominal sentences. Uh, but in English, such a thing does not exist. So how can we fix this sentence? We can simply say, not enough teachers are available in them. Okay, let's continue reading. Thirdly, the crime problem. Now, what's wrong with this sentence? It's the same mistake. It's a sentence without a verb. It needs to be changed. It needs to be fixed. Criminals are everywhere at night. No mistakes here in this part. The police must work hard to arrest those criminals. No mistakes here also. Put them in jail. Oh, there's a mistake here. And provide job opportunities for the poor so they don't resort to a life of crime. There's a mistake here also. What's the mistake? I'll tell you. Now, the writer here is trying to say that the police must work hard. The police must put the criminals in jail. And the police must provide job opportunities. Well, this is actually... Um, a mistake in ideas because it's not the responsibility of the police to provide job opportunities. But let's forget about this right now and just focus on the grammar because the main focus of this lesson is actually grammar. Okay, now what's wrong with that? You can't start a sentence with a verb in English unless you're making an order. 
right? Unless you're talking to someone and giving this person an order, like, for example, when a mom says to her son, study hard, so she's giving her son an order. Now, when you're writing an essay, you are not giving an order to anyone because you're not really talking to your reader, particularly when you're writing uh, an essay for the IELTS exam. So who are you talking to when you say, put them in jail? Are you talking to your reader? Are you asking your reader to put the criminals in jail? No, you're actually talking about the police. You're saying that the police must put the criminals in jail. So this is wrong. You can't use a period here and start a new sentence. Provide job opportunities. This is also the same mistake. You're talking about the police, yet you're giving an order. And this order is addressed towards the reader. So like you have to fix this sentence. OK, in the next part, I'm going to rewrite this paragraph for you and show you how you can fix all of these mistakes and correct them. But first, let's try to look at the lessons that we can learn from this part. The first one, make sure that every sentence has a verb. As I said, in, in English, there is no such a thing as a sentence without a verb. Make sure that you use the commas correctly. And as I said, the next part will explain to you how to use commas correctly. Don't start your sentences with verbs unless they are orders, unless you're giving orders to someone. As we said, study hard, do your homework. Now in task two, you're not gonna use any orders. So don't start your sentences with verbs. You may use orders in task one if it's a letter, if you're taking a general IELTS exam and uh, of course, task one in the general IELTS is a letter. So you may use orders there. You may like be asked to write a letter to one of your friends. So you can give some orders to your friends. You can say, for example, um, wait for me. I'll visit you soon, something like that. But in task two, definitely there will be no orders. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to rewrite this part and correct any possible mistakes. Let's try to correct it together. A number of measures should be taken by the government to make our city a better place. Okay, simply we can just remove this comma and use a period here. That's it. That's all you have to do. But if you do that, then the first letter has to be a capital letter. It should improve the condition of the streets which are filled with potholes and broken parts. As I said before, this comma is correct, so we don't need to change it. In addition, our schools are in a dismal situation not enough teachers available in them. We can simply correct the mistake here by adding a verb. And the most suitable verb in this situation is or. Not enough teachers are available in them, okay? Thirdly, the crime problem, okay? We can fix this by adding a verb. So we can say the third problem that the government has to take care of is the crime. We don't need to repeat the word problem. Okay, so we just say the third problem that the government has to take care of is the crime. Now we have a verb, so it's a grammatically correct sentence. Criminals are everywhere at night. The police must work hard to arrest those criminals, put them in jail and provide job opportunities. Okay. The police must work hard to arrest those criminals, put them in jail like that, remove the period. We can't use a period in this situation. Put them in jail and then remove this period also and provide job opportunities for the poor so they don't resort to a life of crime. Now, of course, as I said before, this is also gonna be a mistake because it's not the responsibility for the government to provide job, uh, for the police, I'm sorry, to provide job opportunities. This is something that the government should do. So we can say, we can put the subject here. We can say, and the government should provide job opportunities for the poor. Okay, so now we need to return to this part. The police must work hard to arrest those criminals, put them in jail. So we can just remove the comma again here and, and say, and, the police must work hard to arrest those criminals and put them in jail. And then we can start a new sentence here. Then, then we move and now. Then the government should provide job opportunities for the poor so they don't resort to a life of crime. Okay. And here we need to use a comma because this is this has been forgotten. We have to have a comma here. 
Okay, now the paragraph is better. It doesn't have any grammatical mistakes and uh, it's easy for the reader to understand it. Okay, in the next part, I'm gonna explain to you the rules of using commas in English correctly. Now let's talk about the rules of using commas correctly in English. The first one, when there's a connector, a connector in English is a word that connects two sentences together. Like the example, if you study hard, comma, you'll succeed. So the connector in the situation is the word if. Here are some other connectors. When, while, before, after, as soon as, once, etc. When you use any of these connectors, so you're gonna put a comma after the first sentence and before the second one. If you remove the connector, then you're gonna have to remove the comma and use a, a, a period instead. B, when there is an adverb at the beginning of the sentence, like the example, recently, comma, a lot of changes have taken place in Ismailian. Examples of other adverbs are unfortunately, luckily, surprisingly, basically the words which usually end with ly. You could also use a comma after the organizational words because they are also considered as adverbs. Firstly, comma, we have to work hard. Secondly, thirdly, finally, etc. C, after introductory words that can be removed from the sentence without affecting the grammar, like two days ago, comma, I met a very nice gentleman. This part can be removed from the sentence and the sentence will still be grammatically correct. You can just say, I met a nice gentleman. More similar examples would be seven years ago, three months ago, etc. Next week, I'm going to travel to Alexandria. Again, you can remove this part. Generally speaking, Moroccans are nice people. D, when there are positives. Let's talk about positives for some time. Apositives are a group of words that provide extra information about the subject of the sentence. Like the example here, Barack Obama, comma, the 44th president of the United States, comma, vested Egypt. Now, this part is telling you who Barack Obama is in case you don't know him. And this part can be removed from the sentence and it will still be grammatically correct. You can just say, Barack Obama visited Egypt. We indicate that this part can be removed from the sentence by using a comma before it and a comma, a comma after it and a comma before it. Here's another example. An insect, comma, a large cockroach, comma, is crawling across the kitchen table. We can remove this part. We can just say an insect is crawling across the kitchen table. And this part, as I said before, is used to define the subject of the sentence. In case you don't know what an insect is, in case you don't know what this insect is, it's a large cockroach. E, when there's a list, I'm taking art history, comma, Russian literature, comma, microeconomics and macroeconomics next semester. So that's the list of words. Use a comma here and here. And before the last word, you don't have to use a comma. You can just use the word and. Finally, if you use and, but, or, so, yet. Now, this part can be a little tricky, so you need to pay attention. Now, if you use them before complete sentences, use commas. If there are no complete sentences, don't use commas. Like what? Look at the situation. He walked all the way home and he shut the door. In this situation, you have a complete sentence. You may ask me in English, what's a complete sentence? It's basically a sentence that has a subject and a verb. He walked. He shut. Now, if this is the case, you use a comma here. Another example. She purchased the car, but she rejected to pay for the insurance. She purchased, she rejected. So we use a comma here. One more example. I lost my job, so I can't afford to go to Europe this summer. I lost, complete sentence. I can't afford, complete sentence. So for this purpose, you're gonna use a comma here. Now, don't use commas if you don't have an incomplete, if you don't have a complete sentence. Like the example, he walked all the way home and shut the door. There is no subject here. So we're not gonna use a comma here. She purchased the car, but rejected the insurance. There is no subject in this place. So we're not gonna use a comma here. Okay. Now I'm gonna give you an exercise to practice using the commas correctly. What you need to do is to look at some sentences and decide where you're gonna put the commas in these sentences. You can look at this part right here. Hold on just a second.
Okay, so here are the sentences right here. I would like you to take some time, read them, and decide where you're going to put commas in each one of the sentences from 1 to 14. I'm going to give you some time to read, and if you need more time, you can pause the video, finish all the sentences, and then I'm going to show you where the answers, where the commas should be placed. Okay, now let's try to answer this exercise together. In Twain's novel, in this situation, we're supposed to have a comma here because all of this part can be removed. You can just start with this subject. Racism provides unique symbolism. This sentence is grammatically correct, and this part can be removed. Number two, eventually I was able to finish the term paper. Now, this is an adverb. We can just use a comma here. Number three, with the sweat pouring down his face, the security guard chased the thief. We can just put a comma here. Number four, at the casino, Mike lost his money and his pride after the casino. Here's a comma. Number five, pausing only for a sip of water, the runner continued at an exhausting pace. Hmm. Where's the comma? Should be here. Because you can start the sentence with this subject. The runner continued at an exist exhausting pace. Number six, although I was tired, I finished the paper by the 6 a.m. deadline. Hmm. Okay, so that's the connector. You have two sentences. You're supposed to put the comma between the two sentences. So I was tired to put a comma here. Now, many people make the mistake of putting the comma here after although this is wrong, of course wrong. We can't have a comma here. Number seven, sleepily the teacher designed this wonderful exercise. So that's an adverb, it's easy, a comma here. I took Angie, the one with the freckles, to the movie last night. Hmm, okay. In this situation, we have an appositive. And a positive, as I said before, provides you with extra information about one word that comes before it. So it seems that this is the a positive because maybe you don't know who Angie is and I'm telling you who she is. She's the one with the freckles. So we need to put a comma here before the one with the freckles and a comma after it. And perfect. You now have a grammatically correct sentence. One more time. This is called an a positive. Okay, number nine, although you may be right, I cannot take your word for it. It's easy now. We did a previous sentence that has the word although in it, and we know that we're supposed to put the comma after the end of the first sentence. So although you may be right, comma, I can't take your word for it. Number 10, if you decide to cooperate with us, we'll grant you immunity. We have F, which is a connector. Okay, so we have to look at the end of the first sentence. You decide to cooperate with us. That's the end. So we put the comma here. To apply for this job, you must have a social security card. Oh, okay. Where is the subject? It's the word you. So we can put a comma here, and we can always start the sentence from this place. Number 12. I am typing a letter, and she's talking on the phone. Oh, we have the word and, so we need to make a decision. Are we going to use a comma? Do we have two complete sentences? Yes, we do. I'm typing the letter. That's a complete sentence. She's talking on the phone. That's another complete sentence. So it seems that we need to use a comma before end. Okay. Number 13, my oldest cousin who lives in Detroit used to be a policeman. Oh, okay. So it seems that in this part, we are providing extra information about my oldest cousin. You don't know him. You don't have any idea about him. So I'm telling you, he lives in Detroit. Okay, in this situation, we should use a comma here and there. Oops, okay. Finally, I wanna go now, not later. Uh, it seems that one part in the sentence is not an essential part of it, and it can be removed and the sentence will be grammatically correct. Which part is that? I wanna go now, not later. Yep, it's this part. It can be removed from the sentence. So we need to indicate this fact by using a comma here. And now the sentence is grammatically correct. Let's take another exercise. Okay, let's look at this exercise right here. Uh, in this part, you have some punctuation problems. What you need to do is to try to fix any punctuation mistakes that you might have here. 
By that, I mean that you might have commas that need to be removed or commas that need to be added or uh, periods that need to be changed into commas or even capital letters and small letters uh, that might be corrected. So take some time, look at the sentences from one to eight, try to change any punctuation mistakes, and then I'm gonna show you the, show you the answers. Uh, if you need more time, you can pause. Okay, now it's time for me to show you the answers. Let's look at the first sentence. Working hard and saving money are the only ways to be able to afford an apartment in Egypt. We have a problem here. It's related to the comma. You may say, but we have a complete sentence here. Yes, but the rule is you have to have a complete sentence before and after, not just after and not just before. So in this part, we don't have a complete sentence, which means that the comma needs to be removed. This is the first change. Okay. Let's look at the second sentence. Satisfying all workers in their workplaces cannot be achieved because most work areas don't combine all the factors that make all the employees feel fulfilled. Okay, so as you can see here in this part, because most work, this part should be connected to the previous sentence. So it seems that we cannot use a period in this situation. It has to be removed. So it has to go like this and then use a small letter here, and then the sentence will be grammatically correct. Okay, here's one more example. Advertisers do their best to convince customers to buy their products, but this doesn't mean that customers should believe everything they say. Now, you cannot use the word but at the beginning of the sentence, at least not in the formal situations. So this period is wrong, it needs to be removed, and we need to use a comma instead. And then we're gonna use a small letter here. And now it's a grammatically correct sentence. Number four, pollution has become a huge problem. So something needs to be done to solve this issue. One more time, you can't use so at the beginning of a sentence, at least not in a formal situation. So to fix this problem, we're simply going to remove the period, use a comma, change the capital letter into a small letter, Remove the comma from the situation, and now you have a grammatically correct sentence. Number five, increasing the salaries of the teachers, reducing the numbers of the students in the classrooms, criminalizing private lessons. These are some of the solutions that can be used to improve education in Egypt. As we said before, you can't have a sentence that doesn't have a verb. Look at that, increasing the salaries of the teachers. Where is the verb? Don't say that increasing is the verb because increasing is a subject here. So this is wrong. This whole part can function as a subject. This whole part can also function as a subject. And the same goes for this part. So how can we fix that? There's a very simple solution. Remove the period from here, make it a comma, remove the capital letter, make it a small letter, remove the period, use and, and remove the capital letter, make it small, and remove these, okay? Now it's the correct sentence. Let's read it together. Increasing the salaries of the teachers, reducing the numbers of the students in the classroom, and criminalizing private lessons. All of these three things are the subjects. This is called a compound subject. It's like when you say Ahmed, Mustafa, and Ali, are coming today to visit us. This is not correct. You can have three subjects, a compound subject. So this is the same, increasing the salaries of the teachers, reducing the numbers of the students in the classroom and criminalizing private lessons are some of the solutions. So now this way, the sentence is grammatically correct. Let's look at number six, opinions are divided. Some think this is that this distribution of wealth is unfair, others disagree. It seems that the first sentence ended at this part. So we need to use a period here. Opinions are divided, period. Now, this is the beginning of a new sentence. We have to have a capital letter. Some think that this distribution of wealth is unfair. Now, there is no connector here. We can't use a comma. We talked about this before. There's no connector. So we have to use a period and then start 
with a capital letter. Others disagree. You might also say that we can use a connector here. Yes, we can do that definitely. So we, instead of using a period, we can say while others disagree, and the sentence will still be correct. So we can say something that this distribution of wealth is unfair, while others disagree, it's grammatically correct. If you remove the connector, you're gonna remove the comma and use a period instead. Number seven, language is an essential way of communication, which people cannot do without. And that's why any flaws found in it will lead to dramatic personal problems. Okay, first of all, this part is not an essential part in the sentence. So we should use a comma in this situation because we can't stop. Language is an essential way of communication and stop. Okay. And that's why any flaws found in it will, will lead to dramatic personal problems. Okay, no mistakes here. For example, when a person cannot talk to those who are around him or her in the society, he or she will feel lonely. Oh, okay. There's a mistake here. What's the mistake? I'll tell you. When is a connector? And it's connecting two sentences. The first one, a person cannot talk to those who are around him or her. That's the first sentence. What is the second one? I'm sorry, in the society belongs to the first sentence. I'm sorry. And then you have the beginning of the second sentence. He or she will feel lonely. So where do we put the comma? We put it here in the situation between the first sentence and the second one. And now the sentence is grammatically correct. Finally, however, ignoring the instructions of the government will not lead to any positive results. Mm, okay, what do you think? Where's the mistake? Okay, I'll tell you where the mistake is. It's related to the capitalization of the letter I. After the comma, you're not supposed to use a capital letter unless it's a word which should start with a capital letter. Like if it's someone's name, for example, However, Ahmed is not coming today to visit us. But if it's not a word that should originally start with a capital letter, you just give it a small letter. That's it. This is a very common mistake. I've seen it in so many situations. Okay. I hope today's lesson was useful. If you have any mistakes, if you have any questions, if there's anything that you don't understand, please let me know and I'm going to make sure that I explain it to you. Thank you. And I'm going to see you in lesson three, inshallah. Have a nice time.